Are you ready to hit the road? First day we planned for a shorter day because we had a lot of last minute preparations we had to get done that morning. And we were only going to be traveling from Topololo Pass at the Idaho border. We had about 30 some miles to go to get to the Dunrovin Ranch. So we figured it only was going to take us about a half day, or our hopes anyway. Having as many people as we had and as many things as needed to make it on the truck and on the trip, um, it was pretty essential to make sure that we were trying to stay at least a little bit organized. Okay, is the generator on? No. Welder? No. Wood tools? No. Generator, I guess. They're putting the generator and the welders on. And that's about all I can check off. Oh, I gotta get matches. How are you feeling about this trip? One thing to keep in mind as you watch this documentary is we're all a little camera shy, so if you see someone acting funny or running away, you'll know why. <laughs> Say something. Shy, come on, for the camera. I, I, Dan, what do you think about this trip? I don't know. Yeah, so what do you think about this trip? I think we're doing it. Good, we got one good answer. Zeke, say something quick about the trip. Well, I don't know what to say. So. Just say something that sounds professional. You're looking forward to it. <laughs> Zeke, just say it's going to be one good ride. <laughs> say it. Well, we are blessed. Yeah, say it. One good ride. What about the trip? I, I just don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty excited. We're just rolling down the road, taking the first load of horses up to Lolo Pass, the first leg of the journey. So let's see how it goes. How do you feel about this trip? This is exciting. Very exciting. What do you think, Promise? Yeah. Good? Grace? Very adventurous. Ah, adventurous. All right. Well, let's go get to the adventuring then. So we left Saturday night, drove all through the night. Um, got to Montana early in the morning, exhausted, and we were waiting in the parking lot to, I guess, meet up with the crew. We were sitting there and all of a sudden there's a huge line of like trucks with hay and water and horse trailers and all these things and I was a little, <laughs> caught a little off guard. Um, it was just unexpected. Yeah, I had no <laughs> idea just how much work is involved and actually what you do need to make a successful trip and that it does require um, much more than just the, the simplicity that I had thought in my mind. <laughs> We 
got to uh, Lolo Pass and that's when they took the safe coach off the truck, uh, started teaming up the horses and we were kind of just like, okay, let's stay out of the way because we have no idea what's going on. <laughs> it's very important that the harness fits properly, especially the collar because the collar is what carries the whole load, I guess. And it's, it's like a shoe that doesn't fit if it's too big or too small, you're going to wear blisters on them. It's kind of that same, same idea. So the team we decided on for leading, we had Rosie and Shine as leaders, and then Taz and Dagir are the four wheel team. And it was a cold morning, and you know, the harness was cold, it was a lot of excitement, so we kind of had a little rough start there. Once we got out on the road, it was pretty smooth from there on out. We rolled into Montana on the pavement of Highway 12. Long before pavement or coaches, this route was a main passageway through the Rocky Mountains for the native people journeying between the western coast and the Great Plains. Eventually, natives would guide Lewis and Clark across this route and it would start being used by trappers, prospectors, and other travelers. By the late 1800s, a stagecoach would bring visitors up the pass to the Lolo Hot Springs every other day. We set the first stage stop at about eight miles. The first thing we learned is it's going to be a lot of waiting. How close are you to me? Should we harness? Nothing. By the time we can talk, we'll oh, be able to see them. <laughs> wave our hat. We're about five minutes into it. How do we feel about the sitting game? That's about how we feel. Yeah, how do we feel? How do you feel about the sitting? What do you think about it, Zeke? Is that a video? Yeah. And the very next thing we learned is there wasn't near as much waiting as we thought. The first swap out was pretty bumpy. We underestimated how long it would take the coach to get there. We were definitely going to have to get faster at swapping horses out if we were going to make it in the time we wanted to. Okay, hey, hey. make sure all of this is organized very well. Each team with each team. It's downhill all the way from the Idaho border to Olo. So we decided it was kind of a waste of a team putting the front team on there if they're just holding back anyway. So we ended up switching to just a team. And then that worked so good, anywhere that was downhill or level ground, we pretty much just used a team anywhere we could after that. We had a friend ride along from the Idaho border to the first stop, and then pretty much the rest of the way down we gave rides, and it's always fun giving an old-fashioned experience to folks. One of the newspaper articles written about us before we took the trip uh, mentioned that if anybody wanted to host us, if they were potentially along our route, uh, to go ahead and reach out to us, give us a call, see if that was something that might work out. We had quite a few people reach out. One of those was the Dunrobin Ranch in Lolo. We had talked about several different ideas for going through Missoula, and the Dunrobin Ranch ended up being the perfect place to overnight there. Um, and then uh, be able to get a head start first thing in the morning to be able to go through Missoula with less traffic. Arriving at the Denroven Ranch earlier in the day meant that we had the time to get the horses settled in, introduce them to their pasture, and get ourselves set up so that we would be ready to hit the road in the morning. After we'd been at the Dunroven Ranch for a little while and got settled in, 
we were able to get a chance to give some more folks some rides, probably about a dozen or more people. We really enjoyed doing that. Everyone was really excited. We even got to let some of the kids drive the stagecoach and you could definitely see the excitement on their faces. Some, it was hard to get them on, but once we got them up there, it was hard to get them off. So the first day we went 34 miles. We we're all pretty happy with how smooth it went. We got to the Dunrovin Ranch. The folks there were super nice. They fed us supper and had a campfire ring. So we sat around and sang some songs and roasted some marshmallows. Then we set our clocks for 3 a.m. and hit the hay. Day two, we got up about 3 a.m. because we wanted to beat the traffic through Missoula. So we got the horses grain, we all met for prayer. In order to pray for safety as we're going down the road with the horses this morning, that you just uh, keep it safe and just uh, put this in the work smoothly and then uh, you just go with it throughout the day and then we meditate on you. The kitchen crew got some food together and set it out for people and then we scrambled around and got ready for our first full day. That morning was the first time either Yoshai or I had got a chance to drive the coach during the trip and even though it was starting to rain lightly, we were both glad to be the ones that were climbing on top. We had bought some battery operated flashers ahead of time and we were putting them to good use. They were definitely a good investment. The blinker truck was also something that was proving to be very useful, especially going through all the traffic in Missoula that morning. Elissa was driving it and she pretty much took on that job the rest of the trip. It's 514 actually and we are almost all the way through Missoula. Things are going good. We've uh, Taz and Bagheera ran from Lolo to Missoula. It was pretty miserable this morning. Shai was wondering if he could get hypothermia in his hand. In the time it took them to get from Lolo to Missoula. Well, it was raining a little when we left that morning, but about 10 minutes down the road, we were completely soaked through because the rain just kept picking up and it got worse every time a car would drive by. You'd get more splash up from that. And then the stagecoach just leaned forward and there's water running off the roof onto the seat and down our backs. It was pretty miserable, but thankfully coming into Missoula, we couldn't have been more happy to see the girls that got us some hot coffee. <laughs> made it a lot better from there on out, but it really made me think of the old time drivers. They didn't want to have warm coffee like that, but it just gave me a big appreciation for them. Driving for a stage line would have been a far cry from a spring picnic. Schedule was very important to stage lines, so there was no slowing up for weather. Additionally, because of wanting to keep the best handle on their horses, drivers often wore very thin or even no gloves even in the coldest of weather. For this and other reasons, drivers received very high salaries for the times, sometimes even up to $125 per month. Well, we've got one more mile to go until there's a trailer with horses. This team is getting pretty tired, so I thought it was interesting for all the boys griping about the little teams. The big team is the one that's getting tired the fastest, so. All right, Siam, update us on how we're doing. What's that? Update us on how we're doing. Well, it's still raining. Yeah. But we're getting closer to somewhere. <laughs> somewhere that's not here. So are we 
we farther along than you thought or about this where you thought we'd be? Well, we're pretty good well, we're making pretty good time anyway running them last. So you're running them 10 miles? John. I feel wet. I feel real wet. Stagecoach is just going to run all day, take all the teams, but that morning John and I both, I think, about 20 miles into it, were hoping for either Blue Sky or a new set of drivers at the next stop. Thankfully we got the new drivers. Alright Zeke, what's the verdict from the top of the coach? What does the verdict mean? <laughs> verdict means the, the outlook. What does it look like up there? Well, it's like it's going pretty good. Oh, good. So we planned on running all day, but it was wet and cold enough. We decided, well, we may as well pull off and make camp at the next spot we find. So we did that. We set up our panels. We turned the horses out. We grazed. We watered them. Gave them some hay. So. Pretty much after that, we decided, well, that's that actually works out pretty good, breaking the day in half like that. It's, I think it's easier on the animals, and the nice to take lunch then anyway, everybody's there, so that's pretty much how the rest of the trip worked out. We were all wet at this point. Each of us guys had taken our turn getting soaked on top of the stagecoach, and the girls got their fair share of water, climbing through the bushes and up hills with their cameras. We were miserable in a way, but sharing this experience with family and friends made it worth it all. What you doing in there? I'm drawing my soft shot. <laughs> okay. Even though we joked around about being too cold and wet to go any farther, none of us would trade this experience for anything. So when we were almost to Clearwater Junction, 
looked down and the pin was coming out of the tongue. And when we're climbing a hill, winding alongside the river, worst place for this to happen, I wasn't scared. But I looked over at John, and he was white as a ghost. I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, he thought we were going to die. So we finally got to a place where we could get pulled off the road. Thankfully, we had a whole truck full of tools behind us. We had a 220 weller settling torch. I mean, just about any tool we could need, we had. And so we got that fixed, no problem. We just wrapped some duct tape around it and kept going. We were all really impressed with how the horses handled the traffic, especially the teams we had in Augusta. I mean, they've really been around cars and stuff until we got on the road, so pretty good. Springtime meant high waters for the Blackfoot River that we were traveling along. The Nez Pierce's name for the Blackfoot River was Kokohalishkit, meaning River of the Road to the Buffalo. Though we weren't quite to the Great Plains yet, we were breaking out into some patches of open country. We had been running the teams 10 miles twice a day, but we started realizing we'd probably get more out of our horses if we ran them like five miles and more times a day because then they would probably even get tired on a run. And we started doing that about Ovando, I guess. We also started fine-tuning our swap-out process a little bit. Well, some people were hooking up, we'd have the other people unharnessing and putting horses away and cooling them off and everything else. After spending an entire day in the flasher truck going 10 miles an hour, it was a really exciting sight to see Lincoln and the Lincoln Rodeo Grounds. Alright, here we are. We just came down onto the flat into Lincoln, Montana, so we made our goal for the day. Yay! As we found out, the Rodeo Grounds were one of our favorite places to overnight with the horses. They were already set up for stock, and we just got to unload and relax usually. I know what I'm doing. I'm going behind that building. Hold these. Are you really? Yes. With all the rain we were getting, we figured after dinner we'd all hop in the pickup and drive up Stemple Pass. We had a few options to cross the Continental Divide. That one looked more promising. The snow line had melted enough to get through and the country looked really good. So we were really happy with how well our horses held up. Our power wagon team pulled one of the longest, steepest runs of the day. Altogether we covered about 90 miles, so even though it was a little wet and miserable the beginning part of the day, that evening the clouds broke and promised us good weather for the journey up Stemple Pass in the morning. <laughs>